I'm watching Georgia Sunshine Live real quick. I don't even know if I've opened this vlog. If I haven't, then I'll stick it in before this. We'll be okay. So I made the pasta. This is the Explore Cuisine pasta. We're gonna try it plain real quick. I just cooked it with some salted water. Try it plain very quickly, but I'm about to put some turkey meatballs over this. This is fantastic. Now, I'm used to gluten-free pasta, keep that in mind. This is delicious. I will definitely order this or buy this from Costco in bulk. That's amazing. Now, it's um, 20 carbs and 13 fiber and three grams of sugar. So, for one serving. So, you have to keep that in mind. It's portion control, but it's an all pasta. This is fantastic. This makes me incredibly happy. I'm gonna put my turkey meatballs over it in just one minute. Okay, real quick, let me show this to you. I am so excited to have this for dinner. So turkey meatballs, super quick, super easy. Just use the regular meatball recipe that I have shared before, but use turkey. That's it. I'll post the recipe below. Pasta. Pasta! Yay! Good morning. I just wanted to show you that I cut the Hot Pockets I made last week in half. And there it is. I put it in the microwave for 45 seconds this morning, and now I'm gonna have my breakfast. I had the same thing yesterday morning. It was very, very good um, and very filling. So there you go. I think this is a great option for breakfasts. However, like I said last week, I'm going to make them smaller. And honestly, instead of making six, I may try and make eight. Um, because when you add the eggs and the bacon and the cheese in it, it's very, very filling. But you could also just throw all the ingredients in and kind of make a muffin out of it. I've seen that done too, so we may try that. We'll see. Just trying some different options for breakfast because I know we kind of get sick of the eggs and bacon thing, for sure. What I'm having for lunch today is half an avocado with a leftover pico de gallo. Okay, we just went to Costco and HEB. It's a very small grocery haul, very small. We just needed a few things and um, also, because H-E-B gave me a whole ton of coupons. I'll go over it when I'm all through. Okay, hold on. Okay, here's H-E-B. So we have taco seasoning in bulk because it's us and we eat tacos every week. Broccoli florets, I bought them at H-E-B instead of Costco because I had a $2 coupon. Coffee, because I needed some decaf. This is like my favorite. This one is the San Antonio or the Texas pecan. That I love them. The Houston blend's not bad. It has a little coconut flavor to it. An avocado, because avocado. These were not on the list, but they were buy one, get one free. Um, and I wanted it for a uh, salad dressing for the in the refrigerator. But, um, uh, yeah, I'm not gonna be heating anything up in it. But, uh, you know, buy one, get one. I didn't need to, but it, whatever. Tortillas, my seltzer water, because it was um, $2 off. If you spent $2, and this was $2.19, so I paid 19 cents for that. Olive oil, I usually buy another brand, but this one was on sale, so I went on and picked up the Cola Vita. I'm okay with Cola Vita. It's not my favorite, but it's okay. An onion, chocolate almond milk for Chandler because I had $2 off coupon, and this is $2.25, I think. Hot Pockets, if you bought this one, you got this one free, plus I had an additional dollar off coupon. And Rob's favorite chips from the bakery and bottled water. This was $2.29 and I had a $2 off coupon. So that's why I picked that up. We don't typically buy bottled water too much, um, but this will last us forever. I mean, we just don't go through it very quickly. Uh, I don't really like to buy bottled water, but you know, we have our little drinking cups. So um, I'll go over the total in just a minute. And then here's Costco. Look what came in. Coffee, they did not have my vanilla coffee that I normally get. It was out. So, or they just didn't have it. You know Costco, things come in, they go, ah. Oh. So I got this one, it was $10, $9.99. So not a bad price. Cheese, 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 butter, Parmesan cheese. I think those speak for themselves. And the giant Suavitel, because that is my favorite. I love to smother my towels in that. I just absolutely love the smell of it my linens, my towels, my husband's shirts. I just love it. I can't help it. All right, so that's everything. Let me go over the totals. 
Oh, we're still battling with flies. They keep coming in, and the longer the door is open when we're waiting for dogs who are seniors to take their time to get in the house or limp into the house, the flies are flying in. Okay, so HEB was a total of 33.13, and I had uh, $19.45 in coupons. So that's pretty awesome, and that's why I went to HEB. Now, had I not purchased the olive oil and the coffee, that's $14 at that $33. So, because the olive oil was, is, um, okay, so the Cola Vita was $7.98 and the, uh, the coffee was $6.74. So basically that's uh, $14, $15 of that $33. So there you go. Um, and the broccoli is really not economical for me to buy it at HEB. It's much more economical to buy it at Costco. But like I said, I had a $2 off coupon. So that's why I picked it up there. But um, yeah, so and the Pop-Tarts, the Pop-Tarts were $9.98 and $4.82, but I had a coupon for $4.82 off. So that was really good. I know Hot Pockets are junk food, I get it, but I have young boys that live at home or visit or come to my house. It's a great thing to have on hand. Uh, what am I gonna say? I mean, they're kids, whatever. Only I love Hot Pockets, I just can't eat them, which is why you see me making them so frequently in the cooking vlogs, I love them. And Costco was uh, $66.67 plus another $106 because I bought more contacts. So. Okay, I just wanted to show you very quickly. It is Saturday the 15th, 12.51 p.m., 94 degrees outside. Rob is having pizza for his Father's Day lunch today. He's having it today because they're closed tomorrow. So, And tomorrow we're cooking out with the kids and everything. So they're all coming home. It's gonna be a great day. So you're gonna see lots of cooking in just a little bit, like that for you, but in just a little bit from me. Um, preparing for tomorrow. So, but I wanted to show you this. I made these last week. I know you're probably over hearing about the Hot Pockets. That's fine. <laughs> this is it. This is the pizza one. I wanted to show it to you cut open. So, it's been in the refrigerator. <laughs> Millie. It's been in the refrigerator. I put it in the microwave for 30 seconds and then in the toaster oven and toasted it to crisp it up, brown it up a little bit. Now I'm going to show you what's inside. Excuse my countertop. I've been washing dishes. I got recipes everywhere. We're just going to go with it. Okay, I hope you can see that. Can you see that? I think you can see that. All right, so it's not super crispy, but it is enough. Oh, there we go. Now, see that bottom crust is a little thick. You see, that's a little thick for me. And the top crust, I'd rather it be more like that top crust and then more filling. So we'll work on that, but I'm gonna keep using this dough. I'm gonna keep using this dough. I think it's a great dough. So what are we about to make here in just a minute? Broccoli fritters with cheddar cheese, chocolate chip almond flour muffins, keto pretzels, and for dinner tonight, so we're not making this right this second, and I'll just show it to you. Tiffany, PK Mom Life, made this recipe. She said it was really good, so she posted it to the community page, and so I'm gonna make that. And then Stephanie um, posted to our community page a um, fajita soup. That's gonna be coming up, probably not today, but this soon, because it looks really, really good. Um, so, but tonight I'm gonna have quick keto chicken recipe with bacon ranch. So I have chicken in there, that's what I'm having. The guys are having leftover pizza and leftover tacos. Um, so I'm making this for me and I'll likely be able to have it tomorrow uh, for dinner as well. And I'm telling you with all the kids that are gonna be at my house, my kids except for Chandler love broccoli, love chicken and love bacon and love them all together. So I'm sure they'll be having some of this too. <laughs> So, all right, that's all that's happening now. Look, basically what's gonna happen with the exception of maybe the crackers and the pretzels, I'm just gonna cook it and then show you, uh, I'm sorry, my face is so itchy. Show you the, I'm tr trying new makeup and it just does not like my face. Um, show you kind of the results and then give you some talk through, some talking points about it. You know, not talking points, but some, my thoughts about it. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna eat my pizza pocket. I have my sparkling water that I got from H-E-B for like 19 cents for the 12 pack and watch some PK Mom Life, she got her trunk club. And then I'll be back to cook. See you in a minute. Okay, it is now 6.41 on Saturday night and I have been super busy in the kitchen the last few minutes, few a couple hours. 
So on the stove you see cooling our some pecan muffins. And in the oven are chocolate chip muffins and we will go over those in just a minute. But currently I am making broccoli tater tots or broccoli cheddar tot, broccoli and cheddar tots keto. Um, I will link this recipe for you. It is from Lennyville.com. Um, I haven't, of course, made it yet. Now, what I did was I took frozen broccoli, I put it in the microwave, I microwaved it until it was just warm, and then I put it in my little food processor, my little ninja, and chopped it up to make riced broccoli. I may have taken it a little too far. It's a little fine. Then I put it in a cheesecloth, Put it in the cheesecloth, wrung it out super duper, super, super duper till it was dry. Measured out the two cups, measured out the two cups of cheese, the, the almond flour, the egg. Don't just crack an egg in there, beat your egg a little bit and then put it in there. And I mixed it all up with my hands. It says to roll little balls, but you know, I always use my little scooper. So I'm gonna do that and then um, we're gonna bake them. So this should be about perfect timing to get the muffins out of the oven and my um and these in the oven so these need to bake at 400 degrees so i'll need to adjust the temperature on my oven so i'm just going to roll these up and then after you roll them up you yeah tap them flat you know sort of like a tater tot Flip each tot, bake five to eight minutes more. So eight minutes on one side, flip eight minutes on the other side. Eat alone or serve with a keto-friendly sauce. Now I am making these for tomorrow, but we are going to taste one tonight, of course. And I had a spoonful, don't do this because you're, it's raw eggs, but I am a batter-loving girl and I miss cake batter and the cinnamon pecan muffins really, truly helped, that batter helped me a lot. All right, so let's get busy. Okay, so here are the muffins. Um, I will move the camera in one second. I just wanna show you. These are the cinnamon pecan and these are the chocolate chip. So these just came out of the oven, so let's crack one of these open. You really need to use parchment baking uh, cups, otherwise they stick, no matter what you do. So here is a chocolate chip muffin. Oh, there's only one chocolate chip in there. There's that one. And then here, let's choose a small one, is the pecan. We, I have made these before. Now I ended up, I forgot an ingredient in these and I will tell you in one second. All right, but I'm gonna try each of them and then we're gonna talk about them. I have not forgotten about the pretzels. I am making the pretzels. I'm just making them tomorrow. So they're nice and fresh, not sitting in the refrigerator overnight. For some reason, I just feel like that kind of dough is always better when it's super fresh. Okay. So the cinnamon pecan muffins are the ones I've made before from Keto Gatherings on page 274. Well, I was also looking at a recipe from Pinterest and in that recipe it only called for almond flour yogurt, but just almond flour, no whey protein isolate, no oat flour, and I know from my experience now, baking, keto baking, you really need those. One or the other or both, you really need them in order to make a really cake-like texture in your, in your muffin. And these are delicious, delicious. So what I did was, I did the same cinnamon pecan muffin recipe, I left out the cinnamon and the maple. So the cinnamon and the maple extract, and that is it. It's cin powdered cinnamon and maple extract. I left those two ingredients out. And I added in a quarter cup of the uh, sugar-free baking, sugar-free sugar -free chocolate chips, lilies. That's all I did. And honestly, I like them better than the pecan ones just because the pecan ones, I forgot the baking powder. Really? So they're a little dense, you know, they're a little, they're not as fluffy, but 
They're still delicious. They smell heavenly. They taste wonderful. And I'm gonna heat them up. Also, what I'm gonna do with these is I am gonna make a little sugar glaze like I made for the donuts. I'm gonna make that like a cream cheese glaze. Frosting for these. So we will have that on those. That'll be delicious. And the chocolate chip muffins, they don't need a thing. Um, so these are really, really good, which is why I told you I'm very glad that my kids are all coming home so I can send them home with baked goods. So again, this is in the Keto Gatherings cookbook and it is um, by Christy H. Sullivan. I will leave it linked in the description box for you, but I encourage you to make these. I the cinnamon pecan muffins were a staple for us for a long time. Like I made them, I made like three batches of them and then put them in the freezer and they lasted us quite some time. This is one that you can use for meal prep. Same with the chocolate chip muffins. You can make them for meal prep and it's super easy and you've got them, you can throw them in the freezer, throw them in the fridge and throw them in your lunch box. And by the time you get to lunch, they should be nice and defrosted. They still might be a little cool, but little, you know, 10 seconds or less in the microwave, you're good to go. So anyway, um, and last time I made the muffins, I did not include the pecans in them, but I put them in this time because my oldest loves pecans. So these I made specifically for him. And the chocolate chip muffins I made for Devin and for Robbie and for Chandler and for Sarah. So whoops, so yummy. Okay, so the fritters are done. I'm gonna show them to you. We're gonna try them and I'm gonna talk to you about them. Here they are. Can you see them? I know, my mess, whatever. Here they are. This is the second batch, the smaller batch that I put in there. Um, these were smaller and that's something you def definitely need to do. And now my battery light's flashing. One minute. The measurements, so it's not super clear. When the broccoli is dry, it measures completely different than when the broccoli is damp. So do you measure it before you squeeze out the water? I measured mine after. So I think it should have been before. <laughs> so just keep that in mind. Okay, I'm gonna get a little ketchup. We're gonna try these. These are supposed to be like tater tots. That's why the ketchup. I know, well, we'll just try it plain first. Okay, so here it is. There's that and that side, and then we're going to break it open. There we go, all right. Needs salt. Otherwise, it's tasty. Yeah, that's really good. Mm -hmm. Is it a tater tot? No, no. But it serves the same type of purpose. So next to a hamburger, instead of a pile of broccoli, you can have something that has more like the texture of a waffle fry or a tot, a fritter. So these would be delicious with ketchup. I will make these again. I think my family's gonna love them tomorrow. I will not reheat them in the microwave. I will reheat them probably in the air fryer or in my oven here. Um, I'll just throw them in a pan on a parchment sheet in the oven. The microwave I feel like would make them soft. So there you go, this was delicious. Now, mine cooked for 30 minutes. So mine cooked for 30 minutes in the bottom rack of the oven um, and this doesn't doesn't give you the instruction, but it needs to be in the bottom of your oven and it needs to be at, um, like I said, actually mine took 40 minutes, I apologize, because it was 20 minutes on each side. So, and I flipped it, so on the bottom rack. Okay, so there you go, that's the full recipe. These are delicious. I'm going to let them completely cool, then I'm going to put them in a container and store them for tomorrow. So now for tomorrow, I have the muffins and I have these. Tomorrow during the day, we're going to make the pretzels and the chicken, quick keto chicken recipe with bacon and ranch. I don't know. Okay, I've actually just stuck it in the oven, but I'm gonna put this at the beginning so I can tell you what I'm making. I just sort of jumped into it. Okay, we're making quick keto chicken recipe with bacon and ranch. Uh, PK Mom Life posted this to our uh, community page, so um, I wanted to give it a try. Uh, I don't have any of the stats on it, but um, there, it may have been there, it just maybe didn't print. 
I'm not sure, but it's one of those typical casseroles. It's not, you know, it's a, it's a chicken and cheese and cream cheese and um, heavy whipping cream casserole. The difference in this one is it uses the homemade ranch seasoning mix, which I used from one of the cookbooks, Southern Keto Cookbook. I used the ranch uh, recipe, the dry ranch recipe from that. And um, so there you go. Now I've added to my list today, after I clean up a bit, um, we'll go on to the next thing that I am cooking today. And actually, I don't think I opened the cooking vlog today. It is Sunday, the 16th of June, 89 degrees outside, 1245. Happy Father's Day to you fathers out there. Mine is sitting over here. He did not relax today. It's been very, very busy. For this chicken recipe, I completely forgot to mention, I did use an instant pot, my instant pot to make the chicken. I took three chicken breasts, put a tablespoon of butter in the instant pot on saute, put the chicken breasts in there, sauteed on both sides till just a touch of brown, just a touch. You don't want that crust on the outside in this recipe. I also took my Trader Joe garlic salt seasoning and put it on there. That was it, nine minutes in the pressure cooker and let it release on its own. Chicken is delicious. And actually, I feel like it's a touch overcooked. I've said this already. So I think what I'm gonna do is reduce it to six minutes and then let it come. You have to let it release on its own, otherwise it's undercooked. But if you, I don't know, maybe if I, even when I did it for nine minutes, it was undercooked. So maybe what I should do is 10 minutes or 10 or 11 minutes and release the steam. I don't know, I'm gonna play with it a little bit and just kinda go from there. I'm looking for a, a juicy cooked chicken but not overcooked because I'd like to turn this into um, the chicken I make in bulk. I'd like to make a whole bunch of it in bulk, shred it up and put it in the freezer so when I want to make one of these chicken recipes it's there and ready to go and I don't have to dirty up an instant pot because these casserole recipes are great for meal prep. They're good. You can kind of change up the seasonings to give them a little bit different taste and you can put cauliflower in them broccoli in them and if you have a little bit higher of a carb count you can put some carrots in them and it's quick easy and great to take for lunch so great to have for lunch even if you're a stay-at-home mom like me let me clean up a bit i'm gonna clean up a bit and then we'll discuss the last two recipes i am making today I actually have to run to the store and get ingredients so i can make them Let's hope these things taste as good as they look. These are the salt ones, and these are the cinnamon sugar ones. Oh my goodness, those look delicious. So, I broke one open. Here's the texture. Come on. There we go. Looks pretty good. 
I did try them. It's different. It's a little bready. More bread-like than pretzel. -like. I mean, it's pretty good. This would make a really good cinnamon roll dough. A really good cinnamon roll dough. It's amazing the doughs you can find trying different recipes for different things, even though that's not what you're making it for. So there you go. It has yeast in it, which I should have probably let them sit. The recipe didn't ask, but I could have let them sit and they should have raised a little bit. Maybe, I don't know. Hmm, I don't know, maybe next time, we'll see. Pretty good, um, a lot of work. These were a lot of work, so keep that in mind. So maybe, maybe for a special occasion or meal prep or something to make and then freeze, to have in the freezer. So hopefully my family enjoys them because there's a lot of them over there. Okay, so you saw the pretzels. <laughs> I don't even know if I told you I was making pretzels. I probably popped up a screen telling you I'm making pretzels. Um, also made, this is called sugar-free sex in a pan. I'm not sure how I feel about it right this minute. Um, it was multi-stepped. It says it takes an hour and 20 minutes to prepare. Maybe, maybe. Here it is, so there are the layers. I'm gonna turn the camera. Okay, so the bottom layer is crust. The white layer is cream cheese and the top layer is pudding. It's a chocolate pudding. And then on top of this, once it is set and cooled, is heavy whipping cream. This is not going to be ready in time for my family. It's not. I mean, it's 3.30 now. Everyone's due here at five. We'll, sorry, hold on. We will cook dinner and eat. Maybe it will be. Maybe it'll be mostly set. I'm trying to get this to cool down quickly, but it's probably not going to be. Usually that kind of thing takes overnight, but we will see. Uh, worst case scenario, they're going home with some. The whipped topping is already made. It's in my fridge, staying cold. It's just a standard whipped topping. I'll let you know what I think of this after we try it. I did hit, I've had so much food today between tasting the pretzels, tasting, oh my goodness. I had some of the chicken casserole I made, which was very good. And um, kind of tasting this along the way, I don't need to eat dinner. In fact, I likely won't eat dinner. If I do, it'll just be a little bit of cauliflower. I made some cauliflower casserole for Devin and I. Um, we'll see if I even eat that. I'm very, very full and kind of nauseated from so much sugar, even though it's not sugar, but it's sweet. Anyway, so this is gonna go in the freezer um, and I will let you know everything about it. It was multi-stepped, multi-fold, made a mess. My kitchen sink is full, but this type of thing is usually pretty worth it. Now I did make one from the cookbook, keto cookbook, desserts, keto desserts cookbook, silk pie that was absolutely outstanding. So if this one is better than that one, fine. But I think that's the one that I'm gonna make at Thanksgiving. But this is great for 4th of July because you can make this layer, make it nice and really, really cold, layer the strawberries on top with the blueberries and make the American flag, you know, like everybody does. You can make this for 4th of July and put the stars, the flag on the front of it, on the top of it. And there's your dessert that you can bring to the party and know that you can have because it's keto and it's safe for you to eat. There you go. Now. This isn't like super duper. So it has 6.3 carbs, 2.6 uh, fiber. So, you know, one serving and it makes 1 16th of the recipe. So this is cut, this is a nine by nine pan. It's cut into 16 squares. Just, just saying, that, that's very small. So keep that in mind. Most people would cut this into eight. So half of what you would normally think in this pan. So do keep that in mind. It is, it's, it is carb friendly, you know, it is keto, but there is portion control to be considered here. So there you go. Just think about that. Make a pretzel. It's delicious. Make the silk pie like I made. I'll leave that cookbook linked in the description box. Buttery light flashing. Okay, I'll see you in a little while. We're making, we're, we're having hamburgers and hot dogs and that's about it. So you've seen hamburgers and hot dogs, but I'll come back later and let you know about the dessert and close out the vlog. So I can't wait for my family to be here. I can't wait.
It's gonna be a great evening. They're all gonna be here and we're gonna swim. And we're gonna cook in the grill. It's gonna be a great evening. Perfect Father's Day. Okay, so the uh, pie, the, it's called sex in a pan. I don't like the pudding. Nobody liked the pudding. That really wasn't good. I suggest using a different pudding recipe, but the cream cheese or the cheesecake portion, the crust and the whipped topping were delicious. Um, so, you know, I might just kind of use that as like a cheesecake recipe, um, as, but there are several of them out there. So that was maybe a little bit of a fail. Maybe if you have a better pudding recipe, you might try that. Um, so it just didn't taste good. It didn't have a chocolatey taste. I don't even know what it tasted like. It just wasn't very good. So um, I wish I hadn't put it on there. I wish I would have left it off and maybe put it separate for everyone to try but I didn't, so there you go. Okay, well that's it for this week's cooking vlog. Um, it was a great meal. We had great burgers. Taylor manned the grill, and they made the buns. They did everything, the boys. They were all out there together cooking, and um, it was great. It was just a great afternoon. So I hope you all had a wonderful Father's Day. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye.